I hope all of you are keeping fine. I am going to start the lesson, organizing. So I request all of you to take your textbook and keep it with you. You remember in March when we had the last lesson in business studies, we were discussing about the importance of organizing. And just going to rewind the points. Look at the points. You have it in your book. Specialization, clarity in working relationship, optimum utilization of resources, adaptation to change, effective administration, development of personnel, and expansion and growth. Already we have explained for the first six points. So I'm going to explain the seventh point, expansion and growth. That means organizing is important for the expansion and growth of any types of organization. Let me take the example of our school itself, Placid Vidyavika. I usually tell you, about 30 years back, the school was started with 30 or 30, around 30 students and 15 teachers. Now, after 30 years, when we are in 2020, you can see where the Placid Vidyavikar is standing. Almost 3,500 students, 150 teachers, and a lot of departments, etc. So that shows if there is proper management and organizing, it will help to expand the business and it will help to grow. So any organization will have to organize it. That means arrange people, resources, finance, etc. in such a way and handle it effectively so that everything will be going on smoothly. Now we are going to see the organization structure. See the definition, the framework within which the managerial and operating tasks are performed. It specifies the relationship between people, work and resources. I will take it again. The framework within which managerial and operating tasks are performed. So it says clearly the task of each and every person, the duty of each and every person the relationship between different people in the organization, everything is clearly stated. It specifies the relationship between people, work and resources. Say for example, when I come to the class, I am very clear what I am supposed to do. I am a business studies teacher, so I have to teach you only business studies. And I am very clear when I should come to the class because the timetable says clearly. So, Clarity and I know who is my superior and who is my subordinate. So clarity in working relationship Everything is there so that things will be going on smoothly. Now we are going to the, see the span of management Span of management gives shape to the organizational structure Span of management look at this one the number of subordinates that can be effectively managed by a superior it determines the levels of management. It can be narrow or wide. I will take it again. It gives shape to the organizational structure. Now, it refers to the number. Say for example, span of management means, or it says clearly, a man, how many subordinates a manager can supervise at a time. Effectively, if there are so many people, and if they are not qualified and experienced, maybe one person will be finding it difficult. So we have to find out what is the correct number of employees or the subordinates a manager can supervise and manage at a time. It refers to the number of subordinates that can be effectively managed by a superior. It will determine the levels of management. Now, if the number is too large, a manager himself may not be able to manage everything. So he needs subordinates and each subordinate will be given the number of employees so that they will be able to supervise. That is why it says it can be narrow or wide. I'm going to show that one. Span of management, we have seen that it can be narrow or wide. Span of management means the number of subordinates a manager can manage at a time. Look at this one. In the first case, there are only very few subordinates for the manager called A. There are only six subordinates, so he can easily manage that one. But in the second case, you can see there are so many subordinates. So naturally, the manager will be finding it difficult to manage and explain everything to them. So what they will do is uh, 
with the red the manager superior will be having six subordinates a b c d e sorry b c d e f g then each assistant manager is given five subordinate seats so there are six as associates or assistants and each one is given five subordinates so all of them together can manage the 30 employees of the subordinate so here a will be supervising his assistants b c d e f g and b will be supervising the first five subordinates of the employees c will be supervising the next one it goes like that one the advantage here is that each assistant manager needs to concentrate only on five employees and a need to concentrate or supervise only his assistant now they can easily manage everything here you can see there are different levels three levels are there a is on the top b b c d e f g below him then below that each subordinate or a subordinate managers are having their own number of employees they will be able to supervise clearly now the question comes what is the number that can maximum number that can be managed by a superior the answer we have can we cannot give a definite number it depends on the qualification the experience the understanding the ability of the subordinates if the subordinates are experienced qualified efficient maybe a manager can manage 10 or 20 or 30 but at the same time if the subordinates are trainees or newly recruited people then they need to be attended or they have to be given attention very well or every time so in that case it is better to have subordinates arranged under the assistant supervisor that is what it shows so this is the narrow level this is the wide level only a and the subordinates are there okay next we are going to see the organizational structure earlier we have seen the span of management it is the span of management which determines the organizational structure the organizational structure can be functional or division functional or divisional structure we are going to take the first one functional structure that means grouping jobs of similar nature under functional and organizing these major functions a separate departments creates a functional structure functional structure means finding out what are the different jobs to be done in an organization there may be similar jobs group them into department so that we will be able to find out how many departments are required say for example look at that one in a manufacturing concern there can be purchase production marketing accounts and personnel departments all departments report to a coordinating hub so in any organization you can find out the different works to be done and divide it into different departments in a manufacturing concern these are the five main departments purchasing department that means purchasing raw materials etc then converting them into finished the product production department then it has be given it has to be given to the customers advertisement has to be done marketing department then the finance is required for running all the departments account department is there and the personnel <coughs> employees are required that is done by the personnel department so all department but there will be an overall coordinate or coordinating hub all these department because we have seen in the first chapter coordination is the essence of management so even though there are different departments it is necessary that they should work hand in hand each individual can be independent but at the same time they have to be interdependent so for interdependency or in order to bring them together a common coordinator is necessary that is why it says all departments report to a coordinating hub so things can be going on very well now look at that one the advantages of <coughs> functional structure occupational specialization if i am in, <clears throat> if i am in the purchasing department or i am the head of the purchasing department or the employee of the purchasing department i am doing only that work continuously 
I am concentrating the work of purchasing or if I am in the production department, I am concentrating my work only on the production or any such department, anybody who is working will be con continuously repeating the work. Say so simple example, I usually tell you, for years I was teaching only or I am teaching only business studies. I am able to explain like this one only because I, I was doing this one for so many years. So the advantage here is that occupational specialization will be there. When anybody does the work continuously, naturally, that person becomes an expert in that one. So without making any mistake, the work can be done. That is the advantage, the first advantage of a functional structure, occupational specialization. Second one, promotes control and coordination due to similarity in work. As I told you, in the purchasing department, all the employees are concentrating their work in the purchase. Same is the case with the production. So controlling the overall supervisor can easily control the activities and the coordination, that means the activities to be done by different people in the same department can be coordinated only because they are doing the same work, similarity in work. Then the third one is uh, increased managerial and operational efficiency. If I am the HOD of the purchasing department or production department, since I am concentrating only on that one, as I told you, specialization will be there. My total attention is only that particular work. So that will be increasing my efficiency, managerial efficiency will be there. I will be able to do, since I am doing it repeatedly, or I am specialized in that one, my efficiency will be increased. In any organization, in any organization, if the managers are efficient and effective, and if they are able to do the work properly, the result will be more profit will be there, as we know. That is the aim of any business, earn more profit so that the business will be growing. If there is functional structure, if they are following functional structure, naturally, because of the increased managerial op operational efficiency, more profit will be there. Then as we have seen, each person or each employee or each department is uh, concentrating on a particular work. The advantage is uh, no duplication at all. Again, I am coming back to my example. I usually tell you, I teach only business studies. Your economics teacher is only econ teaching economics. Accountancy teacher is teaching only accountancy. So there is no duplication. So no duplication means economies of scale. You know that one. That means unnecessary expenditure can be avoided. So it will be resulting in the reduction in the cost of production. The efficiency and effectiveness of any business organization depends on economies of scale. If the business organization is able to produce goods at a very small amount, retaining the quality, or if the cost of production is less, naturally they will be able to make more profit. One thing, the quality of the product has to be maintained. The next one is that since the employees of each department is concentrating on the same work, Training is easy. If they are doing different work, different types of training has to be given. But in the case of production department, all of them are engaged in the production. Maybe they are producing different goods. Even then, the work done by them is same. So training is easy and also ensures due attention to different functions. Production manager or HOD of the production department is attending only on production. HOD of the purchase department or accounts department is concentrating only on their work. So, ensures the attention in each department and the activity done in each department will be gain, getting due attention. The advantage is that efficiency will be there. I usually tell you, when you take anything, there can be positive and negative side. We have seen the positive side of the functional structure. Now the negative side, the disadvantage of less emphasis on overall objectives leads to functional empires, hinder interaction between heads. That means if I am the production department head, I will be interested in the smooth functioning of the production department only. I may not be very much giving or giving attention to the overall objective. 
the business is always there for making maximum profit providing quality products etc this is possible only if all the departments are cooperating and coordinating together but here what happens in the functional structure is that each department head will be giving more importance to their activities and their department they may not be very much concerned about the activities which will make the organization successful if i am the hod of the production department i will be more interested to produce quality goods sometimes i may not be ready to listen to the suggestions made by the purchase department or the sales department so that may create problem leads to functional empires i may become so powerful and i may not be ready to listen to them so hinder interaction between heads as i as we have seen or as we know the authorities of different departments are quali- qualified and experienced so if i am the production department head i may not since i am qualified experienced i may not be ready to listen to the suggestions given by others that is why hinder interaction between heads as we know the success of any organization depends on the coordination and cooperation of different department interaction be- between departments however efficient they are it is necessary that all the department heads should come together and sit together and discuss but sometimes it may not happen because ego problems may be there second one leads to problems of coordination heads may not exchange the information all the as i have told you they may be each head of the department may be, may be reluctant to exchange the ideas if i if i don't have a coordination between uh, if i am the production manager if i am not coordinating with the marketing department or purchasing department because the goods will have to be purchased by the purchase department according to the instruction given by me the marketing department will be giving instruction to me with regard to the quality of the products depending on the feedback from the customer so it is necessary that all these people should come together but sometimes coordination may not be happening as i told you maybe because of the ego problem all of them are qualified and experienced then conflicts of interest between departments example between sales and production department so production department head will be concentrating on the production if he does not accept the suggestions given by the sales department because they are the people who are dealing with the customers they know the mind of the customers and they get the feedback so when they are giving the feedback the sales department is giving the feedback if the production department is not following the instruction it may create problem the sales department may not be able to sell their product that is conflicts of interest between departments example between sales and production department now the next one is a uh, fourth disadvantage is leads to inflexibility all these points are related i being the production department head as i told you since i have a feeling that i know everything i have qualified i have experience i may not be able to or i may not be i may not be ready to change what i am doing even if suggestions are given by other department heads if because of the ego problem i may not be ready to change what happens people develop narrow view points i will say that i will concentrate on the production department each one of you concentrate on your work that, but that is not enough it is necessary that all the department should come together then only the business organization can be successful now we are going to see which kind of business organization can adopt functional structure that is suitability size of the organization big or not when the business or if it is a sole trader now you have such kind of division you will not see such kind of division because usually small scale organi or sole trader business are small scale ones but when the business organizations are big large activities are going on it is better to divide the functions find out the similar functions divide them into departments and give it to each specialized people that is which says size of the organization big or large has diversified activities needs high degree of specialization we have seen one of the greatest advantage of functional structure is specialization because each department is 
concentrating on a particular work. Have you have seen? There are two different kinds of structures, functional structure and divisional structure. Already we have seen what is the meaning of functional structure, the advantages and disadvantages. Now we are moving to the divisional structure. Organization with the diverse, diversified activities follow this. Each division is multifunctional. The meaning is, look at this one, organization with diversified activity. If a business organization is providing different products or producing different products, there can be problems. So each product will be separately organized and each sender will be producing that particular product. Suppose, say, the best example is, look at this one, Krithi Jodi Institute. There are so many schools there. Everything is under Krithi Jodi management. Placid Vidya Vihar is there, teaching and everything is going on. Krithi Jodi School is there, again teaching and accounting and everything is going on. Then ICSC is there, college is there. Each one is working separately. Under the same management, that is what is called a divisional structure. Even though the work done by each institution, the work done by Placid Vidya Vihar is same as the work done by other state syllabus or ICAC etc. Only the syllabus is different, but teaching, accounting, transporting, everything is same. So for convenience sake, the CBSC syllabus is separately managed, that is the Placid Vidya Vihar. State syllabus is separately managed, that is Krithi Jodi School etc. So, Organizations with diversified activities, as I said, if a business organizes, if a manufacturing concern is producing variety of products, it is better to divide them into different groups, not department, different groups. And each group will be, or each business center will be producing a particular product. That is why it says, organization with diversified activities follow this. Each division is multifunctional. Multifunctional means that they do, they do different functions like purchasing, production, marketing, finance, etc. <coughs> Each division is self contained as it develops expertise in all functions. Look at this one. Each division is self contained. As I told you, I'm coming back to the example. Placid Vidya Vihar is self contained, means independent. We are taking care of everything here. We don't depend on the Krithi Jodi school or ICSC school there. Same is the case. In the case of a divisional structure, each group of activities or each division will be concentrating on the activities in that particular business organization. Each division is self-contained as it develops expertise in all functions. In each group, in each business organization, under the same management, the activities will be repeated. Production will be there, purchase will be there, marketing will be there, everything will be there. Each division works as a profit center. Naturally, you can see, Placid Vidya Vihar is independent. Similarly, any business organization producing multi-products will be concentrating on their products. Now, compared to the functional structure, one difference here is that there the HOD or the production department or the purchasing department or the accounts department is not worried about the profit. That is, that is the worry of the top level management. I being the production department, my concentration is only producing the goods. Accounts department will be allocating the funds. Marketing department will be making sure that the goods are sold, produced by the production department. So you look at this one, but here, the difference is uh, if I am the divisional head of uh, a particular division under the same management, making profit is my responsibility. If the business is running at a loss, I will have it to be answerable to that one. Take the example of our school. Anything happens to Placid Vidya Vihar, our principal, Father Samji Vada Academy is responsible. The top level management will never ask the principal of state syllabus or ICAC syllabus if something happens to Placid Vidya Vihar. Same is the case here. Divisional head is responsible profit or loss. 
Now the advantages of a divisional structure, product specialization. As I told you, when a company is producing different products, we can take the example of Naruji Suzuki. They have different variety of cars. Maybe they are following this divisional structure. In one division, they will be producing after 500. In another in organization, they will be producing Wagner. So, different products will be produced in different organizations or sections. So, they are able to specialize in the products, helps in the development of varied skills in divisional heads. If I am the head of the, say here, I am coming back to the example of Placid Vidya Vihar, as I told you, the principle of Placid Vidya Vihar will have to look into all the activities going on here, not the, like the functional structure. There, the head of the department needs to concentrate only on the production of purchases. But here, the principle of Placid Vidya Vihar, the state syllabus or ICIC, the principals will have to look into all the activities there. That is one. Helps in the development of varied skills in divisional health, prepare them for higher profit. So, if I am getting the, <coughs> the, the experience of all these activities, then I can be promoted easily because I have already the experience. Second one is that divisional heads are accountable. As I told you, anything happens in Placid Vidya Viha, only the principal Samji Vadakadam will be answerable. Nobody in the other sections will be asked. So, divisional heads are accountable for profit, can measure performance, can fix responsibility. Now the top level management <coughs> can check the efficiency of our principal depending on the amount spent, whether any unnecessary expenditure is there, the efficiency of the teachers, the quality or the result, all these will be analyzed and say, as I told you, the school head or the Placid Vidya Vihar head is responsible. So, look at that one. Divisional heads are accountable for profit, can measure performance, can fix responsibility. If anything goes wrong with the, the result of Placid Vidya Vihar, the principle is answerable. So, it is very easy to fix responsibility. In the other case, functional structure, even if the profit goes down, no single department will be taking responsibility. Production department will say, we produce quality goods at a reasonable price. It is the mistake of the marketing department that they are not able to sell. All these problems will be there. Now the third one is, uh, promotes flexibility and initiative, leads to faster decision making. Now the advantage of divisional structure is, uh, the head of the divisional structure can take decision. Everything is under his control. He can make changes whenever he wants. In the case of a functional structure, that is not possible. The production manager or the production HOD or the purchasing HOD will have to follow the instructions given by the top level management. But here it is very easy. The principle of Placid Vidya Vihar is responsible for everything. So they, he can adopt any changes. When the organization is functioning very well, as we have seen earlier, now the next one is the disadvantages of the organizational structure. Already we have seen the positive side of it or the advantages. Now we are moving to the disadvantages or the limitations. Number one, as I told you, there will be different divisional heads. Each one is qualified and experienced. So conflicts may among different divisions with reference to allocation of funds, as we know. For smooth functioning of any organization or any division of structure, amount is necessary. So when amount is allocated by the finance department or account department, there can be complaints by each division that the money given to them is not enough. As, as you know, if the money is not enough, definitely the functions cannot be performed properly. So, there can be some complaints about the finance allocated. Then increase in cost due to duplication of work. That is one of the, one of the difference between functional structure and divisional structure. When I was explaining functional structure, I said one of the greatest advantage of it is there is no duplication. Purchase department is purchasing goods. 
No other department is concentrating on that one. Production department is concentrating only on the production. If I am the HOD, I need not worry about that one. I think I told you the example in the class. When I come to your class, I don't have to worry about what subject I am going to teach. I am given the subject business studies. So I will not worry about economics, accountancy, mathematics. That means no duplication at all. So here in the organization of structure, all the activities are done. In each division, all the activities are done. So that is a duplication of work is there, which is not there in the functional structure. When the duplication is there, when two people are doing the same work, it is unnecessary. When two people are doing the same work, wastage of time, energy is there that will increase the cost of production. So, in case of division of structure, the cost of production will be very high compared to the functional structure. Increase in cost due to duplicate. That is because of the work is repeated. Purchasing is repeated in each division. Production is repeated in each division, etc. Then the third one is uh, provide managers with provides managers with the authority to supervise all activities, may gain power and may no organizational influence. Now the problem is if I am the head of the organ the organizational structure, I may become a superior. I will be controlling everything. So what happens? Look at this one. Provide managers with the authority to supervise. He is in control of everything. Whereas in the functional structure, it is not like that one. If I am the HOD of the production department, only I can control the production department. I cannot interfere with the other activity. But here, the divisional head is in control of everything. So, sometimes he may not be ready to listen to the superior authorities and that may create problem. Look at this one. Provides managers with the authority to supervise all activities and he may gain power and may ignore organizational interest. There are different, different best example is uh, take our railway. We have the Northern Railway, Eastern Railway, then Southern Railway, etc. But all of them are under the central government. What happens is that the Northern Division may be taking power, the divisional head of the Northern section may be taking power, and he will be doing the things according to his interest. That may create problem. That is why may gain power and may ignore organizational interest. Then suitability. As I told you the example, our railway system is a very big one, one of the biggest in the world. So it is clearly or it is very difficult to manage by one or two managers or heads. That is why it is divided. I think Indian railway is divided into five sections. So look at that one, where large variety of products are manufactured or things to be done are very large, then divisional structure will be better. 